watch your step because you don't want to go tumbling over the edge here. This waterfall is 114 feet tall and 201 feet wide. So it's a big one. Woo! So we've made it to our first stop for the day. And if you haven't noticed already from the preview clips, we are waterfall hunting today in Eastern Idaho. First stop of the day is in Swan Valley, just over a ridge here from the Tetons actually, which we hope to bring you in another video. But like Christine said, today is waterfall hunting. So this waterfall was described in some places on the internet as the best waterfall in eastern Idaho and it's just a short walk from where we're parked here right off the road. Let's show it to you. So it's kind of an unassuming little trail right here on the side of a forest service road but the moment you step out of the truck you can hear the waterfall off in the distance. This isn't too bad. We had read some stuff that this was kind of overgrown and it might be a little bit tighter than some kind of really well maintained trail but it's actually pretty big. that this can get quite slick. Just be careful if you are coming down that you watch your step because you don't want to go tumbling over the edge here. All right, climbing out of here is a chore too but we did it. Well, maybe I shouldn't count my chickens before they've hatched. I've got two more steps to go. Did it! Yeah! impressive than we thought it was going to be. Pictures online are beautiful, but in person it's even better. I don't know how this varies throughout the year, but right now it's spectacular. The waterfall is it's huge. It's really, really wide. It's about 60 feet tall. It goes into the Snake River. So we're in Swan Valley, which is in Teton Valley, but it's spectacular also. So it's lesser known, maybe fewer people even than Teton Valley. I mean, they said best waterfall in eastern Idaho. I'm inclined to believe them. Yeah, but we have two more waterfalls to see today, so that's where we're headed next. Let's go. So to give you some perspective of where we are and where we're headed, we were over here in Swan Valley, and we are now on Idaho 31 headed towards Victor. This is the Teton Valley Scenic Byway, and we are headed all the way over here to the Mesa Falls Byway. So, spoiler alert, we're going to Mesa Falls. There's Upper Mesa Falls and Lower Mesa Falls. We're gonna see both of them today, but you need to stay tuned in the coming weeks because we are going to do a video of the Teton Scenic Byway and a bunch of other things that we're gonna see and do along the way. But right now, on to Mesa Falls. So I heard when you're in Victor, Idaho, the place to stop is Victor Emporium for their famous creamy huckleberry milkshake. So we're gonna get four of those, enjoy them, and then head on to the waterfall. We saw this place as we came into town and we couldn't not stop. Now that looks good. Now I just have to wait for two more. So 
this stop is definitely worth it. These creamy huckleberry milkshakes are really tasty. They are thick and refreshing and you can see the straws, it's the big straws so that you can actually suck the full huckleberries that are in here up. It's really good. So quick stopover, especially because the drive from the first waterfall to the next waterfall is about an hour and a half further than I expected, but yeah. worth it. So have a stop over here in Victor, get yourself a milkshake and then continue on. Here we are about an hour later, we've made it to the Mesa Falls Scenic Byway. This road starts in the town of Ashton and goes all the way to the town of Island Park, which is another big tourist destination and a launching point for West Yellowstone. We're only a couple of miles away from the falls, so we're gonna continue on. So here we are just a couple miles down from that pullout. This is Lower Mesa Falls. This is the overlook right by Grandview Campground. And so there are actually two Mesa Falls and they were, are very well known in the Teton Valley. Um, more well known than the other waterfall that we went to. So I'm really excited about this. And this one, we're just gonna see from a distance right now. But if we're still feeling up to it, we're gonna do a mile and a quarter hike to get closer. First though, after this one, we're gonna see Upper Mesa Falls, which is actually the larger of the two. All right, I hear it already. 65 feet tall. I don't remember how wide, 80 feet wide or so. I'm not sure. I could be wrong there. It's pretty good size, but this is definitely the smaller of the two falls. Let's go check it out. The volume of water rushing through that lower falls waterfall, I mean, must be a lot of it just the roar from up here and you can see there's a lot of water I'm glad we're here at this time of year and you can see people down there that is the hiking trail to get you closer and we were a little unsure at this point in the day at least I was I don't know if I told Kevin that yet <laughs> if we were really gonna do the hike but it looks worth it to me I think we're still gonna do the hike from here is just great. Seeing the amount of water flow down there has got me super excited for both the hike and seeing Upper Mesa Falls now. Both the Mesa Falls are popular stopovers if you're going to West Yellowstone or the West Tetons. So, I mean, this is one of the things to do here to put on your list if you're in this area. Let's go see the other parts. So we made it to Upper Mesa Falls. We are just leaving the parking lot, walking up towards the visitor center, and then it's a quarter mile walk to the observation deck. This is gonna be pretty spectacular. When we left Lower Mesa Falls, we could see some mist in the trees rising in the distance. And the kids were like, what is that? Is that a forest fire? And we think it was the water mist from these falls rising up. That's got to tell you, this is going to be pretty spectacular. To give you an idea as to how big this is and why you can see all the mist from so far away, this waterfall is 114 feet tall and 201 feet wide. So it's a big one. Woo! This is the visitor center here at Upper Mesa Falls and it's housed in the old Big Falls Inn. And that was built in 1915 by the Snake River Electric and Power Company. In fact, it's on the National Register of Historic Places as well. So back in the day, it was a hotel, it had a cafe and a dance hall. Pretty hopping place, I guess. So there's a snow pole over here that measures how high the snow can get. Looking tall there, Christine. I know. <laughs> I'm 
more like that. <laughs> that giant plume of mist is no joke. You can feel it just coming down the stairs from here. This is like an 85 degree day and it's a really nice refresher when the mist kicks up and hits you. Whoa! Look at that! We can't even see the falls yet. so much better than I thought it would be. And I was expecting something really good as I'd seen the pictures, we'd heard about the size of it, but yeah, like, that was, that was way better than I even thought it would be. Yes, you need to come to Mesa Falls. Both of them, Yes. but Upper Mesa Falls if you've got to pick. Well, so we're not exactly going down the hiking path to the lower falls now. I know, it's kind of like back and forth, back and forth. Are they going to hike this thing? Or are they not going to hike this thing? Well, no. No, the kids are super tired. There is no way we're going to milk a two and a half mile round trip hike out of them at this point. You guys are going to have to go take that hike and let us know how it is. We're really grateful for the things we did see. We are going to come back with a couple more videos about the West Tetons. So we hope you check back then. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you guys next time. Bye. Bye. Big truck. <laughs> Quick stopover, big truck. So here we are now. <laughs> Again. In fact, it's on the National Register of Historic Places. Or was it? What's it called? Yeah, National Register of Historic Places. You got it right. Getting this going down? Yep. I'm getting this whole conversation.